More now in our immigration series, Who Gets In? Tonight, we're looking at mining in Canada and where some of those miners are from. Chris Brown just showed us how one company reached into China for workers. This next story is also about Canadian jobs and Chinese miners, but the similarities end there. Now we're going right into China, inside a murky world where other companies rely on recruiters and things aren't always as they seem. Here's the CBC's Adrian Arsenault. Think for a moment just how good Canada sometimes looks. The prospect of working here often seems just as attractive. Check it out. Coal miner, $38 an hour. Permanent, full-time. Medical, group insurance benefits. And then over here, the catch, other languages, Mandarin. That's the detail on Canadian want ads that launched worries about a handful of projects in but a handful of projects in BC. Were non-Mandarin speaking Canadian miners just not willing or good enough? Maybe these jobs weren't intended for Canadians after all. An anomaly perhaps, or perhaps not. We went job hunting for Canadian mining work advertised in China. Not one or two or three postings, but dozens for copper, gold, coal, potash mining. How about a plea for a hundred gold miners in Saskatchewan and the Yukon? Here, 50 more needed. Deadline application 2016. And over here, 500 jobs reportedly available. So we called the recruiting agencies in China and asked, are there extremely specialized requirements? No. Basically, the standard isn't very high, as long as you've done mining in China, one recruiter told us. Seems easy then. There are legions of Chinese mine workers eager to work in countries with better conditions and better pay. And Canada does need the help. The workforce is aging, in mining especially. And to hear recruiters in Canada tell it, seeking workers overseas is absolutely necessary. First one on the top is a uh, site supervisor. This is a, uh, a position that's in great demand here in British Columbia. Manley McLaughlin runs a recruiting firm that's gone south to California to find workers for Canada. He looks, he sometimes finds, but not nearly enough. If we lose them through retirements, then there's a void that's in place that affects productivity, it affects the ability to train people that, that want to come in and work in the industry. So, you know, they're, they're the uh, fuel that the industry operates on. And when, we all know what happens when you run out of gas. Right now, the number of temporary foreign workers in Canada is a few hundred thousand and growing very fast. It is getting easier to bring people in. There are accelerated application times, and in some cases, employers are now allowed to pay these workers some 15% less than the average wage. Companies are happy. Some workers are still thrilled to have the job. So there's no problem, right? Well, as always, the real story is in the details. In this case, in the details of those conversations with the Chinese recruiting agencies. CBC approached one of China's most prominent recruiting agencies to ask about what it would take to apply for one of those lucrative mining jobs in Canada. Hey, you very quickly, the conversation turned to money. So how much can they make? It depends on your employer. The minimum wage is not going to be under $10 an hour for sure. Your monthly salary will be paid at the end of the month. So it's not that much. For some, $3,300 a month. For others, $1,700 a month. It's hard to prove whether any of the job offers are legitimate, but the proposed wage is worth a closer look. No less than $10 an hour? That is substantially lower than the actual wage miners typically earn in Saskatchewan, normally over $30 an hour. So these recruiters offer less, and they have demands. You have to do the math for all the fees you have to pay, including the fees paid to us, paid to the employer. How much are you charging? Over $16,000. And how do I pay? $4,800 up front. The rest, over $11,000, will be paid from your paycheck when you start working in Canada. $16,000 must be repaid within a year. 
to make sure we heard right, we asked another agency and got the same story. So how does it work then? Is the money taken off by the employer or by you? The money goes to us, but we are in partnership with employers. They deduct the payment for us and then give the money back to us. Fees paid to the employer. Mm. Why do they have to pay the employer? NDP MP Olivia Chow has fought for years to tighten protections for temporary foreign workers. That's illegal. That's illegal too. Their numbers are swelling in this country, and so, she says, are their problems. The federal government said, well, employment standards, that's up to the province to enforce. The province said, well, hang on, you brought the people in. You make sure that they are treated properly. So they're going at each other like that? So who's looking after these people? No one. This temporary foreign workers program has become a cheap way for the companies to get workers and skirt their responsibility for training our young people and for paying Canadians decent wages. Not surprisingly, that's not at all how the Minister for Citizenship and Immigration sees it. There's a lot of myths that have been created by uh, big labour unions about the program uh, that are simply unfactual. Uh, we ca we, it's requirement of employers to pay at or above the prevailing regional wage rate for any particular occupation. Um, and uh, this notion that uh, employers are, are paying uh, substantially less than what Canadians would make is simply totally factually untrue. What is admitted by all, though, is that rules and enforcement are spotty in this country. There are many who maintain its workers, Canadians and otherwise, who pay for that. So we've had this long history of importing others to be able to do deadly, dirty and dangerous work for somebody else's profit. And I think that most Canadians recognize that that's an ugly part of our history and that we don't want to repeat that. Wow. Carl Flecker investigates the plight of temporary foreign workers. The references to the booming Saskatchewan in the undercover video made him pay attention. Have you got your eye on a couple employers in, in Saskatchewan in particular that you're concerned about? Yes. A few that you believe currently have temporary foreign workers? Correct and may or may not be treating them particularly well? Correct. Why so vague? Well, we've got to make sure that we've got all our, our uh, documentation in place before we make any claims. Investigations are slow. He suggests all stay tuned. There are workers afraid to talk, locations beyond the reach of inspectors, companies beyond the reach of the law. It's Canada, but it's a murky world. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Toronto. This evening, the federal government responded to an earlier request for comment on Adrian's story. Human Resources Minister Diane Finley wrote that the government takes our responsibility to maintain the integrity of the program very seriously, which is why we have strengthened compliance measures and introduced increased protections for foreign workers in Canada.